Hello, I'm just going to do a quick tutorial on different ways that you can draw and paint and print onto your fabric for your panels in very like childlike, playful, accessible ways with things that you probably have at home or might have some of at home. So I've got two different fabric types to try out on. Calico is a smoother surface and then I've got like a fuzzy soft cotton that's got like a woolly surface to it so they'll react different to the materials. The first, first thing I'm going to try is oil pastel. So you might have something similar at home of well, oil pastels yourself, or you could use like different crayons, like wax crayons, um, pastels. Obviously you're, with these they will sort of rub off when you put them onto a surface, as they would with paper, they might not necessarily absorb into fabric. But you can use hair, like you would use hairspray on top of charcoal, you can use hairspray on top of these materials to make them sort of have like a seal sort of over the top slightly on them but they will always have a little bit of residue coming off them so if you are trying any of these techniques out i would definitely try them out on some test fabric first before you do it directly onto your panel because if you obviously if you make a mark or do an effect that you're not happy with you know you might not want to do it straight onto your panel Also, I haven't done it for these pieces of fabric so I can lift them up, but you might want to tape them to the table surface that you're using as well because when you're dragging like a brush or a pen over the top of the fabric it's going to move, which obviously it won't do with paper but with fabric it's a different material. So you can see how the oil pastel is reacting very different. On like the fuzzy surface it's like dragging the wall across and then on the calico the oil pastel is moving across. So you can... Some of these effects might not be your cup of tea, but you can also play around with adding a material on top of the fabric and then gently hand washing some of it off and then leaving like a residue of it. So you don't have to... This doesn't have to be like the finished effect but you can get a similar effect with this with obviously like with crayons and pastels and things as well and you could as well even try charcoal if you wanted to depending on what kind of effect you're going for or what image you're kind of trying to recreate on your panel another set of materials you can use are like mark pens or um you can use fabric pens if you've got fabric pens at home but obviously not everyone has access to them like you might not do at the moment if you've got like any sharpies or felt pens or like pro markers or any type of marker pen that you've like most people probably got some in the house somewhere you can have a go at playing around with those on a fabric surface because again it's not like a you wouldn't put this on a final like garment and then expect it to be like waterproof and washproof but you could use it as a nice effect on your panel and you can use thick pens and thin pens to get different effects Same with these, if you leave them a certain amount of time to dry, just to test, because you might be doing it on a completely different fabric to me. Leave it to dry and see like how it takes the material that you're using. And if it still feels really damp, maybe try maybe try it on a different fabric or maybe try like a different way of applying it or mixing it with something else. You can always put it in the air and cupboard as well to dry quicker. Another technique could you, or another material you could use um, is water. Like if you wanted a really subtle effect, which wasn't giving you loads of texture, like the oil pastel is giving you a lot of texture. If you wanted something flatter, you can use watercolour paint as well.
and it can be really subtle like I mean almost like you've spilt something onto the fabric like you're staining it you could even do this with different foods and or different foods and drinks so if you had food dye you could it when I've tried it in the past it doesn't always stay on like it's not washproof basically but it does like absorb some of the colour so you can spill like some food dye onto your fabric and paint it in or sponge it in or you could add you could you could put some if you've got some wine to spare you can stain it with a little bit of red wine so make sure you always give it go back and look at things after they've dried as well because at this stage they're still wet or still reacting with the fabric so they won't always be the final look now Then I'm going to use a bigger brush to use on the woolly fabric. And I've used like a mixture of red as well there. Because that might be quite a nice background for any like embroidery or stitching that you're doing. That you can't always easily get with embroidery, you might be able to create you want to be able to create these sort of blending of colours with stitching. Or it wouldn't have the same, exactly the same effect as dye or like fabric dye or paint. Another thing I'm just going to play around with is ink. So this is drawing calligraphy ink. You can get different coloured inks as well. This is brown. So I'm just going to try that as another liquid on the fabric, so you don't really need to mix this with any water. That's obviously it without water on the surface of the fabric. So it's like a very muddy, dark colour, but then I've sort of just washed my brush, brush off slightly. But not put it back in the pot and it's made that really diluted colour. And then here I've put like a strip of it and then added water for it to like show like a gradient, like gradually like stain and get lighter and more subtle down the fabric. Obviously you have to be careful of where because that bleeds quite a lot, so like the really watery materials will spread and bleed into other areas so just be wary of that happening as well but you can always tidy that up with stitching so you could have stitching in between these gaps so you won't be able to see the areas that have like bled and then another thing we're going to try is acrylic paint as well so I'm just going to put a bit on the end of the brush so acrylic paint's like a lot heavier than any of the thing well than the watercolour paint that we've used and the ink that we've used and you can apply it thick and then you just have to leave a bit more time for it to dry but if you want these brush marks on the fabric you could like if you're trying to create recreate like mud or a pasty surface maybe like a painted wall or a rough surface you could leave that with you could create that with acrylic paint after you've let it dry Another thing you can do is mix it with PVA and it makes like a, it will dry, it will have like a shiny effect, um, but it will dry very like hard and solid as PVA dries, but mixed with the paint so it will have the colour of the paint. You might want to literally show a brush mark. as well, maybe. And then another type, so another way of printing onto fabric, so obviously you can, if you are able to screen print or lino print at home, then definitely do, or if you have a studio then definitely do, but if you're not able to, 
you can do sort of stencil printing. So if you've got like a piece of, you can just use a piece of photocopy paper. As long as it's thin. This is newsprint. And I'm just going to fold it to cut a simple stencil. So I haven't used any glue on this occasion, but it is sticking there. But you can use some glue, some spray glue, not like PVA glue or Pritt stick, but you can use some spray glue if you have any to just gently stick it so it stays into place when you're sponging on paint here. Because obviously you don't want the stencil to move around because then you won't keep the shape. Or you can just tape it all into space, or into, into place. But I'm just going to keep it there just for the sake of showing you this. So this is fabric paint. You can try it out with acrylic paint as well. Just gonna put some on the sponge. So I've spread it flat so that I don't put massive clumps onto the fabric surface. And then I'm just I'm sponging, I'm pressing down with the sponge rather than dragging it because if I drag it and spread it across I'm going to move the fabric and then if you feel like you're running out you can just put some more on and you can see where the colours are mixing as well which is it's actually quite a nice happy accident but you can, obviously you can stop that from happening by like waiting, wait, waiting for that to dry maybe or even putting some paper over the top of it. Okay, and then when you're happy with how much you put on, you can just remove it. So that's made like quite a nice shape there. So that was a really simple way of adding, literally just sponging on a, a stencil shape. And that was a really simple stencil that I cut out. If you wanted something really intricate, you could cut it out with a scalpel. But just bear in mind on all the bits that you have, if it's a really, if it's loads and loads of detail, it's going to be hard to sponge because every time you press the sponge, it sticks to the paper and then lifts the paper up. And if you've got loads of little bits that might rip off that technique might be a bit difficult to do but definitely try it because it might work it might it might be fine and obviously you can also paint with the fabric paint and if you wanted to leave like clumpy bits like that you could and leave it to dry And then another printing technique as well. So you might have access to lino printing. You can also use like polystyrene foam sheets if you've got any of that as well. And it's if you are able to get it, then it is a bit cheaper to get as well than lino. Um, with the polystyrene, you would just carve out like with the end of like a pencil or a pen your pattern. So here's an example of lino printing that I've done before. So if it was polystyrene, you would just carve it out by pressing it into the polystyrene and that's your like relief image. With the lino here, because I haven't got any polystyrene to show you, but with the lino here, I'm just going to show you how, so if you've got a lino tool you can use a scalpel where you're just carving into it, but with either one with a lino tool or a scalpel, what you want to do is cut away from yourself so you don't want to cut to push the blade towards you because then you're if you do accidentally slip then you want to be safe and not like, injuring yourself so you want to cut away from you and with the lino tool you want to dig like down into the lino and then sort of scoop upwards with a little bit of pressure so that you're and pushing it forward so that you're carving out a bit of the liner and 
if you do have any like spare like linoleum from like flooring or something you can definitely have a go at trying with this and then like a scalpel if you do but you can get small sheets of lino as well so that is basically how you're doing the cutting and then so I've ended up with like this finished product where I've cut out these lines so if you normally if you, with liner printing you'd use a, when you're doing it by hand you'd use a roller not one of these rollers and you'd have an ink tray which you would then roll ink onto and then roll ink onto the liner like sheet but I'm just going to show you how you can do it with a sponge because if you're doing it really small you can very easily do it with a sponge and you're more likely if you don't have a roller at home this is definitely more accessible to get hold of a sponge um, and I'm going to do it with I'm going to do it with some brown acrylic paint just so I've got like a different colour on my fabric pattern So again, like I did with stencil, I'm making sure it's nice and flat so I don't have big lumps of paint going into the grooves, because you can see where it has gone into the grooves. But you can clean those out afterwards. So I've just sponged it on. You can also do the same thing with potatoes, so if you don't, you can do good old fashioned potato printing onto your panel if you wanted to. It's kind of a similar idea with making a relief pattern. So it doesn't have to be lino. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it here. And you can press down. You don't really I mean you can if you've got a roller, definitely try and use a roller probably. But you don't you can do it by hand. I've done it when it's small scale like this, you can do it by hand. But if you want it completely if you if you want a completely even print just, and just to make sure you have a completely even print and you do have a roller then try and use a roller you can use a rolling pin that you've got in the kitchen as well it would do the same thing and then you just lift it up so if you did want to do it with potatoes you could cut a slice of a potato carve your relief image in and then just use your rolling pin from the kitchen or a wine bottle or something to roll it, roll the pressure onto the print you're making. Okay, so those are just a few techniques that you can do with adding like surface and colour to your panels without necessarily having to dye things. And they're all like materials that you're likely able to get hold of at home as well. Uh, thank you for listening.